to the stage, I'd like to also ask uh, the panelists for our next panel to please make their way to their seats. When Scott finishes, our panel will begin, um, and that will be investing in African energy risk and rewards in E and P today. So if we could please have Mr. Hightower, Mr. Fear, Mr. Anoma, um, and our moderator, Ken, on the stage, and I'll hand over to Scott Evans, and thank you also to Recon, uh, a sponsor of this event. Thank you very much for your support. Okay, uh, thank you, James. Thank you, everybody, for, for attending. Um, my name is Scott Evans. I am the Chief Executive Officer for Recon Africa. I am also a uh, geologist uh, by training. And so I'd like to use this talk to you know, begin uh, forward-looking statements, of course, to begin talking about investing in Africa, ENP projects in particular. So, you know, we, to talk about the investment case, and this is what we take to heart, is there's really three key points I want to I want to bring out. That Africa is, I think all geologists agree, the most underexplored continent for oil and gas. Very straightforward. I could probably emphasize sub-Saharan Africa. I could probably emphasize onshore. Although offshore is, is the same case. So there's a, uh, a, an opportunity from the exploration side that you don't see other places in the world. First point. Second point, and I can say this as someone who's been fortunate enough in my career to work up and down the West African coast, to work in North Africa, now to work in, in, in Namibia, um, and not in a nice office, but out in the field. Uh, energy poverty is significant. It's prevalent, and it needs to be addressed. Uh, the work of the African Energy Chamber is, is absolutely fantastic here, but I think that voice is just now starting to resonate. And from our company's view, oil and gas can be part of the solution and transition, right? Third point, technology and early commitment to ESG can lead to carbon neutrality uh, for, for a given project. So normally when you're listening to an oil and gas person talk about technology, they're talking about you know, fancy colored cubes of seismic data spinning around and, and charts that, that kind of knock your, your socks off. The technology I'm referring to is for new fields. And again, given my first point that uh, Africa is the most unexplored continent, so new oil and gas fields can take advantage of new technologies in their development that can lead to a carbon neutrality. So what am I talking about? Um, the ability to capture uh, excess methane. Newer wells, you can do that. It's much easier than doing it on older wells. Gas to power. For those of you at the uh, conference in South Africa and other conferences this year, gas to power is important. Um, it's good on-grid and it's good off-grid. And for those not the geologists in the room, even if you have an oil field, you're still going to have what's called associated gas. In our case, we see the potential in our exploration efforts for both associated gas and non-associated gas. Zero flaring, right? There are technologies that essentially incinerate flares as they are uh, generated, even for a drill step test. So these are the kind of points that are part of the investment case that, that we take forward at uh, Recon Africa. Okay? I started my timer because this one isn't going. So to talk about the, our project, and I'm talking about this as an example of a, uh, an exploration project in a newer basin uh, in, in Africa. So to look at the map real quickly, you can uh, see that here's Namibia, here's Botswana, South Africa. Our project is in the northeast corner of uh, Namibia. It scoots over a little bit into Botswana. For those watching industry, um, Namibia is very much in the news these days, and it's quite interesting, the sort of confluence of events. So onshore, of course, you know, there it is. Recon Africa has actually been in the area since 2014. Uh, I joined in 2019. But if you look offshore Namibia, all these leases are taken up for, with uh, Totals, uh, Shells, uh, and other offshore operators. Total has just spud its first offshore Namibia well 
uh, called Venus, very exciting. So Namibia, for I suppose a variety of reasons, both you know, governmental, you know, historical and geological, is now just coming into the forefront um, and coming into the, if you will, mainstream of, of oil and gas professionals. And of course, Namibia has uh, just been a wonderful place to, to, to work in. And you know, we've, we really find that it's a, a great progressive democratic country. Nothing but praise for working with the Namibian government. So in Recon Africa's case, we're taking a, I'd say, diligent exploration approach. We are an exploration company. That's what we're doing. We first found this basin that I'll, I'll, I'll zoom ahead and show you a picture of what it looks like. So again, geologists in the room, this is a, the, the only colorful thing I'm going to show you. This is the basin. You can see um, this is the Namibian area. This is the Botswana area. Blue is deep. That's where our sedimentary rocks are deposited. Uh, green is, you know, structures where we'll find traps. Red is where the basement, you know, the metamorphic and igneous rocks are at the surface. So here's the area of interest. So I get often asked, why is this not been looked at earlier? Well, it's under the Kalahari Desert. Petronoblons in Namibia are sort of late evolving relative to the rest of the world. And maybe most importantly, this, aeromag this is aeromagnetic survey, airborne, flown over, uh, really good for island landing basins, was flown by the Namibian government uh, in the 2000s. Recon Africa's founders uh, were the first ones to interpret it. And once they saw it, they saw a new basin, right? And that's how the way we were able to get this position in the acreage. So just to go back to uh, the, the, the program, so you start with identifying a basin, which we have. Then aeromagnetic data doesn't tell you what's in it from a sedimentary rock standpoint. So we drilled two stratigraphic test wells to see what the rocks are. And both wells found uh, a lot of shows, uh, reservoir rocks, um, essentially indicating that we have an, an active petroleum system. Um, that means there's oil and gas there. Is it commercial? Well, that's the progression we go through over time to determine. So with that, we now shot our first 2D seismic uh, to highlight the structures and the places where these conventional reservoirs uh, can be. Um, again, very happy with the, the, uh, the, the, I think, competitive but fair fiscal terms that Namibia and Botswana provide. Um, these are lease contracts. And then again, we have a number of activities going forward um, over the, the next year, uh, more seismic and additional uh, drilling of wells. Uh, I kind of talked about this already. This is sort of the arc of the company. Uh, be, the company was founded back 2012 and 13 when, they, when the founders were looking for places to invest. Namibia looked good above and below the ground. Really the activity, and I joined about here in 2020. It's, it's interesting. So as an operating company, we don't know what it's like not to work under COVID uh, you know, hardships. We bought a rig, we, we, as we were refurbing it and shipping it to Africa, COVID hit, we persevered, got it to Africa, drilled our first two wells early this year, and now we're shooting our seismic. So we are very, very advanced and, and focused on safety and managing uh, our operations under these unusual, unusual circumstances. I mentioned an ESG commitment from the start. You know, in exploration, you know, you're still at that phase where you're de-risking the project. You, you have a lot of reasons to feel you'll find oil and gas and the commercial fines, but you're still at determining that. So an early commitment to ESG for us means a 10 million Canadian committed you know, out of our budget during the exploration phase. Um, and that goes to both, uh, you know, our you know, uh, efforts from, the, from working with the communities, in our case, drilling water wells, through um, uh, working with the, the government to ensure global best practices or on, the, on the environmental side, and then aligning with uh, the local communities and probably most importantly, building a local company so Recon Africa Namibia is the company that does our operations. It's 100% Namibian uh, staffed. The management team there is all Namibian. So from, you know, folks helping us in the field through management, it's 100% Namibian team. 
we feel that's a critical uh, investment and, you know, frankly, profitable decision that we made early and, and it is required. So if you're going to, um, how shall I say, uh, work from the ground up in Africa, you, know, you can't parachute people in from the north and parachute them out. You have to have a commitment to a local team. You hire the best people you can, and then you train the ones that, that are going to be living with this project for the rest of their lives. Um, we saw the picture of our basin. The, we won't go into the details of the two wells. Uh, we are using third parties. Our data is published on the, the web. We have 198 meters of reservoir rock uh, in the first well. Uh, verified by core and logs, Netherlands Sewell doing the work. Um, lots of shows. Second well, we're still analyzing those, those uh, samples. I will say the biggest, one of the biggest challenges we've had this year has been the supply chain issues that we hear about. But taking three months to get a box of cores from Rundu to Houston is typical. You now, because our cores are not important compared to the other things that are being shipped. So supply chain issues are real. We've had to work with them, but that's probably been our biggest schedule challenge. Um, seismic data. So we're at the point, we know we have a hydrocarbon system. Seismic data can be acquired by a number of sources. The source we're using is what's called a, a thumper. It's uh, basically a company in Canada called Polaris. There's a tractor. This is a big weight. You drop the weight and it makes a signal. Seismic data is simply like a sonogram. When you're in a hospital, you're, you know, look, you're looking to see what you know, is in your, inside you. Sound wave comes back, goes out, and is reflected back. This is by far the most environmentally sensitive way to, to get seismic data. Um, we'll show you some of the data. It's good data. Um, and nowadays, with all the processing techniques, we can make more with less, if you will, from a signal side than we used to. We've completed 450 kilometers, and now we're in the process of using it to map the next locations. So here's the seismic data. Who here has looked at seismic data before? Anybody? There we go. Excellent. So, seismic, so geophysicists are somewhere between artists and some of the smartest you know, mathematical geniuses I know. Um, the data, whoops, sorry. The data, we are very happy with the quality. This is from that little thumper you saw. Um, Key premise, and some of the earlier speakers today talked about rift basins. A key premise in our exploration program is that what we are seeing here in the Cavango Basin is a rift basin traveling east-west. It's written up in literature called the Southern Trans-Africa Rift System. Seismic data showing, you know, I think most geologists say, okay, these are strong uh, rift, rift edge faults. So the seismic has proven the first of our key premises um, as, as the presence of oil proved the other one that there is uh, a source rock there. The artistic part, of course, is, is the interpretation. And that's what we're doing right now. But we're really happy with the data. We're going to be acquiring more. We feel it's going to really define prospects. For those of you who worked in geology, geophysics, this is a particularly interesting area. And we put the data, because we're 100% leaseholder, we put the data on the, the web. You know, it's interesting. We'll have guys on Reddit that are like <laughs> interpreting it on their own. You know, it's, it's, it's great. We're trying to demystify the whole process of uh, looking for oil and gas, and particularly in a country like Namibia, which does, doesn't have that history. You know, if I'm in uh, some other countries, oil and gas has been, you know, this kind of seismic data has been shot since the 60s, uh, north in Angola up to, to the Congo, et cetera. So this is new to Namibia. So it's really important for us to make sure that we kind of bring folks along with what the process is. Because as an industry, we have tended to maybe shroud ourselves in a little too much mystery. You know, we we're trying to, as Con Africa, say, look, here's our data, here's what's out there, and we're using third parties uh, to uh, make some of these determinations. So um, in terms of infrastructure, so there's two things. One is Namibia is blessed with a great deep water port in Walvis Bay. It has a rail system that gets almost to our uh, leasehold. So given success in uh, finding a commercial field, uh, there is a way to get our crude, you know, to, uh, to a port. Again, oil does not exist without gas. I'm not going to vent it. 
we're going to use it to generate power. Um, and for in other cases, if it's got to be flared, we'll incinerate it. The power grid for this part of Namibia runs through our lease. Again, we're looking right now into gas to power solutions. They have become scalable, um, which was not in the, something in the past, so large, small to very large. Um, and we think that is maybe one of the first ways to start curing energy poverty. Um, and so uh, we're very excited about that. So again, just to finish up my comments, um, through a series of circumstances, partially luck and partially good science, we found a large undiscovered, uh, undeveloped basin, right? And we're very early in the exploration process. Uh, we have strong government support, competitive fiscal terms. We think it's, it's a great place to invest. Uh, we are funded near term for, the, uh, for what we want to do. Um, can the seismic plus the wells confirms the interpretation that we have a rift basin. I'm looking up online. It's called the Southern Trans-Africa Rift System. Kind of heads east-west over to the East Africa Rift. Um, and uh, we will be using the seismic to identify new drilling programs and we're potentially looking at a partner um, in the coming year. So thank you for your, uh, for your time.